Hello, today we will learn how to change the measurements of the cabinet depending on the user's input. And let's jump right into it. First, let's go to Blender and add a shape key for our cabinet. For that I will go to Mesh Properties, then in Shape Keys menu press plus and that will create basic shape key for default measurements of the cabinet. Then let's create second shape key, which we will be editing. The cabinet is 80 cm wide or 800 mm. Let's stretch it to 1 meter and 40 cm. For that I will go to edit mode. Select the vertices on the left and move them by minus 30 cm or minus 0.3 meters. Now let's do the same on the right side. Select the vertices and move them to plus 0.3 meters. Now if we go to ship keys and move the value, I will be able to control the width of the cabinets up to 1 meter and 40 cm. And if I set the value to 0.5, the size will be 1 meter 10 cm. And so on. So now this is our width control. Let's name the shape key width, save and export to Verge 3D. Now in the app, let's reload the puzzles. So our shape keys will be initialized in the application. Now let's add puzzle on event off. And here instead of click, we will be using change. When something changes inside of this element, the logic from this puzzle will start working. And we will be monitoring the change of the W size elements. Next we will need the puzzle set morph factor. Let's drag it here. And here let's select the frame of our cabinet. Now here let's select the shape key that we will be changing. But now we have another problem. We need to make shape key understand the meters to interpret between meters, measurements and values of the shape key. Because the shape key doesn't know meters, centimeters, etc. It has only two borders, 0 and 1, and the values in between. For that we will need puzzle map range. Let's drag it here and let's change to vertical view for convenience. So what we will do here, we will take these parameters and interpret them into the shape key values. So how do we do that? Well first we need another puzzle, get property, let's place it here. And here we will select value. Let's also make it vertical. And here we need to set W size. We will take the values from here. So from minimum, here we need to set the minimal possible value for our width. So it will be 0 0.8. From max will be the highest possible number that we can type into W size, meaning 1.4 meters. Next, we will be converting it from 0 to 1, because 0 0.8 will be 0 value on our shape key, and 1.4 will correspond to maximum value or 1 of our shape key. So when the shape key is set to 1, the width of the cabinet becomes 1.4 meters. Let's press play and check how it works. Alright, let's change the input and everything works. And of course it works backwards as well. But these changes look a bit too jumpy. Let's make them a bit smoother. For that we need animate param puzzle from animation puzzles. Let's place more factor here. As we have already learned in previous tutorials, Animate param procedurally animates a number or several numbers if it is vector. And then we can use this animation 
to make the changes smooth. So here we already have the final number, the number that we will animate to. It is being set with the puzzle map range. And the number that we animate from is the active condition of the morph width. So let's use it in animation. For that we will need puzzle morph factor. And we will be getting it from the frame of our cabinet or object box. And width will be the target. Let's also make it vertical for convenience. And here we will put the result of the animation. The puzzle updated value. Let's press play and try the animation. And here we go. Now the changes are smooth, but a bit too smooth. So let's change the duration of animation to 0.2 seconds. And here we go, perfect speed. Alright, now we need to do the same, but with other elements of the cabinet, the shelf, the supports, and other elements that we can change to. Let's go back to Blender and add the same shape key for the shelf. Let's call it the same and change it just the same way. Let's make it 1.4 meters wide. Alright, and now the shelf can also change its width. Next, let's add shape key for the support. Just the same way with same measurements. Let's check other elements. So we have left and right doors. Let's also add width shape key for them. In this case, we will set the width only for one side, because we have two doors. So let's change this one by 0 0.3. And these to minus 0.3, so together summed up, they will give you 0.6. Next, we have top and bottom shelves. Let's add shape keys for them and start from the bottom one. Let's add the shape key and repeat our previous actions. And finally, let's add shape key for sliding panel. Alright, for now we are done with width shape keys, so let's save everything and export to Verge 3D. Let's save the puzzles and reload. Now we need to set the freshly added shape keys with puzzles. First, let's add changeable animations for the middle shelf and supports. We can use the same animation, because we have basically the same parameters. Just instead of box, let's select shelf. And that's all that we need to change, because the shape keys are called the same. Let's press play and check. And yep, now the shelf is being animated too. Alright, let's do the same for supports. Press play and supports work as well. Now let's do the same for all other elements. Let's press run codes and open here, let's say, shelves. Ok, next let's check sliding panel. Ok, 
All right, great. Next, let's check the doors. Aha, and here we have a problem. It is not enough. It seems that just changing the doors doesn't do the trick. We also need to move them to the sides. So, let's do it. We will also use Animate Param Puzzle. But the parameters that we will animate will be different. So, we will not be changing more factor, but we will be changing the position of the object. Let's grab the Set Position Puzzle and let's start from the left door. We will change its position by X axis, so we will move it a bit to the left. We will also need the Puzzle Map range, which we will plug in here. But instead of shape keys, we will have something different here. The position of the left door. So, we need to know the minimum and maximum possible positions that we need to type in. For that, I will set the shape keys to maximum. We need to get the default position of the door by X axis here and copy it. Now let's paste it to minimum into the map range. Then let's move it to minus 0.3 meters. Take this position and set it as to maximum. Let's move it back here. Now all we need to do is to plug here updated value puzzle. And here we need to plug active position of the door. For that let's use get position by x axis of the left door. And finally we need to set the duration of animation. So let's set it to 0.2 just like previously. Let's press play, save and check how it works. Open the doors. And the left door now behaves correctly. It changes both its scale and location. Let's do the same for the right door. Let's copy everything. Select the right door and change its locations. Let's go back to Blender and the starting position will actually be the same, but without the minus. So let's copy it and just delete the minus. So it moves in positive direction to the right. Let's save and press play. Let's change the width and perfect, everything works just as intended. Alright, next let's do the same but for height. The process will be mostly the same. Let's add a new shape key, call it height and change the cabinet's height up to 1 meter. The starting height is 0.6 meters, so we are increasing it by 0.4. So now when we set the shape key value to 1, we will get exactly 1 meter height. And of course we need to do the same for the doors and other elements. The only difference will be with the sliding drawers. We will change them in the same way that we did with doors previously. So let's change them both to half of height or to 0.2 meters. Alright, all the shape keys are set up. Let's save and export. Now back to puzzles and here let's create the same element that we have used previously. 
on event of change but this time for age, size or height. Now let's also grab animate param puzzle. Set the duration to 0 0.2. And let's copy this whole structure here. We need to set another morph factor. Instead of width, we will change height. Also, we will need map range puzzle. But now we will be using age size as an input, instead of W size. Then we need to add morph factor changes. Instead of width, we will be using height. Also we need to change the parameters a little bit. The minimum will be 0.6 and maximum will be 1. Let's save it and test right away. Alright, works perfectly. And now let's do the same setup for all elements involved. The left door, the right door, the sliding door. and sliding shelves. Alright, let's save and try everything. First, the doors. The doors work perfect. Sliding door, also perfect. The sliding shelves, and here we got a problem. Actually, the same problem. We need to change the location as well as the morph factor. So again, let's add the same setup that we have used previously. We can just copy the previous setup, which we used to change the location of the doors. But instead of x-axis, we will be changing z-axis. And instead of the door, we will be changing the first shelf. Instead of these numbers, let's type 0.6 and 1. And here let's change to age size. Now we only need to get these parameters. Let's save, go back to Blender and check the positions of the shells and where they need to be. So I will set the height shape keys to maximum, both to the frame and the shelf. And then move the shelf by 0.2 by Z axis. And we can already see that the shelf is in its place. And as for the bottom shelf, we actually don't need to change anything, it is already in its place. So let's go back to puzzles and change the positions only for drawer 2 or the top drawer. Now back to Blender, let's actually copy its new location or the maximum location. And the minimum location we will get by subtracting 0.2. So it will be 0.8. Alright, let's save and check how everything works. Let's open the drawers and change the cabinet's height. And everything works as intended. Also we need to change the position of the middle shelf. Again, let's copy this whole setup. Here, instead of the drawer, let's select the shelf. We will also move it by Z axis, and like previously, we need to know the exact positions. The active position is 0.7, and we need to move it by half of height or 0.2 meters. So the minimum position will be 0.7 and the maximum position will be 0.9. Let's save, reload and check. Alright, 
Now the drawer moves as well. The next object that we need to move is the vase, which stays on the same place. Let's go back to puzzles and copy this whole setup again. The vase will also be moving by Z axis. Let's select the vase and leave other settings as is. Now back to Blender to copy the active position of the vase. It is set to 1 meter. And as we will be moving it by 0.4 meters, the maximum position will be 1.4 meters. Again, let's save, reload and check. Alright, now everything moves perfectly together. And now we just need to do the same for depth measurements and changes. Let's go back to Blender and add a ship key called Depth. Initial depth of the cabinet is 0.7 and maximum will be 1 meter. Alright, let's move it by minus 0.3. So the maximum depth is exactly 1 meter. Let's do the same for the shelf, for supports. We don't need ship keys for doors, because we will just move them. The same goes for both drawers. As well as for the sliding door, we also will just move it without adding any ship keys. Alright, let's save it and export to Verge 3D. Now back to puzzles. Again, let's reload it to get all the new shape keys. Next, let's add another event. On event of change. For D size input. This time I will just copy this whole setup here. Next, let's delete what we don't need, so the shape keys for sliding doors and simple doors. Also let's add shelf here, because we will be changing its depth. Also let's add shape keys for support. Instead of height we need depth. And also here, let's select depth as well. Also let's set the size here. And here from minimum to maximum, we will have from 0.7 meters to 1 meter. More factor will stay the same. Ok, let's save and reload the application and check how everything works. Alright, the main parts change. All the doors are not changing yet. And the drawers are working correctly. Now we just need to add movement for the doors. So let's select door left. Door right. and sliding door. We will be changing the location by Y axis. And as for the starting position, let's take it from one of the doors. Let's say from the sliding door, but it doesn't matter which one, they all have the same coordinates. So here let's type in 0.7 and here let's set D size. Now all we need to do is to get their initial position and their maximum position. So let's go back to Blender, select our sliding door, change the depth shape key to maximum and first here we have the initial position. 
Let's copy it and paste it into puzzles to mean input. Now to get the maximum we need to move the door by minus 0.3 by y axis. Now let's copy it and paste into puzzles to maximum as well. Alright, let's save and check how it works. The doors are selected, let's change the depth and everything works perfectly. Alright, we are basically finished. But first, let's try to input some numbers without using arrows only by typing it from keyboards. For example, let's type in 3. And wow, now we have a huge cabinet. It happens because the puzzle actually allows it. We don't have any borders set up. And map range puzzle just interpolates the inputs and stretches the shape keys accordingly. To fix it, we need to use the puzzle clamp. And this puzzle will help us to set the borders. In this case, for W size, minimum will be 0.8 and maximum 1.4. And our get prop puzzle goes into clamp. So now let's do the same with all other get property puzzles. Let's actually switch to vertical layout because it becomes too wide. Next, let's clamp these values. Minimum will be 0.6 and maximum 1. And the same for the depth. Alright, let's save and check how it works. Let's reload. The measurement change works the same and if we type in 2, no, it doesn't let us. It clamps the maximum number to 1. Alright, that is all. See you in the next tutorial.